in today's video, I'm going to be teaching you on how you can super easily implement the brand new ban API into your Roblox game. Now, the wonderful thing about this new ban API is it actually provides alt detection support. So this means if you ban someone and they try with a different Roblox account, they will still be banned, even if you haven't explicitly stated their name. So this is what it looks like inside of the Roblox game. As you can see, we can see how long we were banned for, a message from our creator, and you get the error code 600. So now that that's out of the way, let me show you how we can interact with this API. As you can see inside of the documentation, as listed down in the description below, you can see that we can pass a couple of parameters here inside of a dictionary. So first we have the user IDs, and notice how it's IDs and not ID, meaning that we're allowed to ban multiple people. As you can see, we're allowed to ban 50 people at max per request. Then, as you can see here, we have the apply to universe, which can either be true or false. And as you can see here, we have apply to universe, which can either be true or false. And as you can see here in studio, say for example, if you have multiple places under one universe, this will allow you to ban them from all the universes. So you can either set that to true or false. And this is optional. I forgot to mention that user IDs is obviously required. Then we have the duration, and this is in seconds. However, it seems to round to minutes, if I remember correctly. Yeah, it looks like, because in this request, I set it to be um, 10 seconds, and you can see it is one minute. So I presume it rounds to the nearest minute. Then, of course, we can have it um, permanently with a minus one. Then we have the display reason. So if we head back again to Roblox, this is the display reason, breaking our terms of service. So Roblox didn't actually show this, but we did. Also, just realized this could probably catch quite a lot of people off guard if you did this. Um, next full, you have your private reason. So this is an internal message. So as you can see, both of these are required. Of course, duration is also required. I forgot to mention that previously. But the private reason is just something that could be a little bit more personal, while the display reason could be more um, vague, for example. Once again, just an example. And then, as you can see here, one of the most anticipated parts of this update is the exclude alt accounts. And as you can see here, we have the exclude all accounts. And as you can see, when it is set to true, Roblox does not attempt to ban any alt accounts. But when it is set to false, it means that these alt accounts, so for example, let's say people have two accounts, both of their accounts will be banned from your game, which is super useful and definitely a request we've been waiting for for ages. Alright, so now I'm going to show you how we can do it inside of Roblox Studio. Okay, so here we are inside of Roblox Studio, and the way I want to demonstrate this new API to you is by actually creating a command, uh, like slash ban, which allows you to ban any play you want. So first of all, we're actually going to be using the text chat service, and in here we're going to chuck in a text chat command, and then here we're going to set the primary alias, and I'm just going to set this to be slash ban. You could have this to whatever you want, like slash terminate, slash ban, slash ban hammer, whatever you want. I'm just going to go for the most basic thing possible. And then we're going to go to server script service here, and we're going to chuck in a brand new script, and we can just call this ban handler. Then up here we're going to define the text chat service, just like this. Game, get a service, text chat service, and this will allow us to communicate and work with our text chat, and this will allow us to work with our text chat command here. And then now what we're going to do is we're going to get the um, uh, player service, and the player service is actually going to be the star of this program. So it's going to allow us to ban people, and it's also going to allow us to get their user ID via their username, which is very convenient for us as it allows us to ban people who are not currently playing our game. So first of all, what we need to do is we need to find our command here. Now, notice it does have a uh, slash ban alias. We do want to actually give it a more specific name, so we can call it the ban chat command, which I think is pretty fitting. So now what we can do is we can listen for when this command is triggered. So we can do this by saying text chat service dot ban chat commands dot triggered connect function and that basically means, let me just show you here, that whenever someone's inside of the game and they run slash ban like this is going to run all of the code that's inside of our function here. So. Once this command is triggered, what we need to do 
is we need to get who triggered it and we need to get which parameters they are passing to the bank command. So we can do this first of all by getting the text source and the text source is going to simply provide us with the user that triggered the command and then in here what we're going to do is we're going to have our unfiltered text so we can just say um, uh, chat text just like this okay. Now what we need to make sure is that only people who have permissions inside of our group are allowed to use this chat command. So what we can do is we can lock this to user IDs and that's what we're going to do in today's video. So what we can simply say is if text source dot user ID equals equals and once again this is a super basic implementation once again this is purely to demonstrate the ban API uh, equals and then what we need to do is we need to head over to Roblox find the player that we want to allow in this case myself of course you're going to pick yourself and this person will be allowed to trigger the command and then what we're going to do is we're just going to copy their user ID which is found in between users and profile just like this it's quite a long number then we're going to head back over to studio and then studio we're going to check if the user ID matches just like this then we're going to go ahead and this means they can only run the ban command if they have this specific user ID and if not, they can still run slash ban, but it just actually won't do anything. Now that we have this, we obviously need to get who they're trying to ban, how long they want to ban them, and all of that good stuff. So if we have another look at the documentation, what we're going to need to collect is the user IDs that they want to ban, um, the apply to universe, which is optional. I'm just going to not define this. Duration, we need to collect this and the display reason and private reason we could probably let these match in my opinion uh, of course if you want to do more sophisticated banning you might want them not to match but in just today's scenario I'm going to make them match and then I'm going to not set excluded alt accounts because we want it to be false so that Roblox does attempt to ban any alt accounts so perfect we need to get the user they're banning the reason they're banning for them for and how long we want them to be banned for so let's return to Roblox and here's where we're going to recruit the help of the unfiltered text. So as you can see, here we have the chat text and let's just see what happens if we print it out raw. So we're going to head into the game here, we're going to load on up and let's just have a look at the output here and as you can see, when I run slash ban cookie, it's going to print slash ban and cookie. Now of course we don't really need that slash ban detail, actually in fact this is how it's actually going to look. So the person's going to pass the username, they're going to pass the ban reason, and they're going to be passing the time. Now in this scenario, I've noticed a little issue here, and as you can see we get the username, but the ban reason can't be multiple words because of the method we're using, which does make this a little bit more complicated. However, we could just have the reason be one word, once again, just for our scenario here, because of course, perhaps if you were setting this up yourself, you would have made sure that there's a panel and it's all nice like that. However, in this scenario, we're just doing the most bare bones basic thing just to demonstrate the API. So what we need to do is we need to separate these specific words. So we need to separate the ban reason, the time, and the player themselves, okay? Now, there's a super simple way we can do this, and we can simply separate the string into different words based by splitting it where space is. So we're going to do this by saying words equal or split string equals chat text, which is our unfiltered text here, and then we're going to say colon split and our separators are going to simply be a space like this. Uh, and obviously we need to say local split string equals as it's a local variable. And now let's run this again and see what's printed when we now split the string. So we're gonna load up here. And now let's say I run slash ban cookie underscore dev x. Then the reason, let's just say hacking, absolutely never. And then let's pass the time here. And if we send that command, you can see it's going to create a table here and inside of here, we have each individual word. So we have their username, the reason, and we have the length. So as you can see here, we have uh, one, two, three, four different values. And obviously we can ignore the first value as it's slash ban, and it's always gonna be slash ban. But the important things here are the username, the reason, and the time. 
So let's just remember this. So let's head back into our script. And if we make a multi-line comment here, just to remember what a typical request would look like. Okay, there we go. So now what we obviously want to do is we want to create different variables to represent each of our values here. So first we need to set the username and we can do this by creating a new variable called username. And then we're going to select each value from the table based on its index. And as you can see, the 2 will select the second value inside of our table. So if we index uh, for the second value, inside of the split string table is going to return the username. So there we go. Then we're going to create a second variable and we're going to call this reason. So this variable is named reason. And then we can set this to be the third. And this is going to pick the third value from the table, which is obviously the reason. Once again, using indexing. And then we're finally going to say local time equals, whoopsies, uh, general rule of thumb is to make sure that your variable names are not the same as any of the Roblox words in simple terms. So we're just going to call this local band time equals, and then we're going to use split string, and we're going to select the fourth value from the table. Now something important to note is that the band time should actually be passed as an integer. So if we have a look at the documentation here, you can see that the duration of the band should be an integer. And however, if we have a look back here, you can see it's a string as it's wrapped in those um, speech marks. And this is obviously not good. However, there's a super handy function that allows us to convert strings to number. And it's literally called toNumber. And if we now pass the fourth value of the split string into this function, it's going to convert this string, which is 10, to a number. So it's now an integer, okay? Now that we've got that out of the way, we can finally utilize the ban API. And now it's so simply easy to use the new ban API, we can use the ban async method like this, and then we're going to create a dictionary just like this, and then we can format it just like this so it's a little bit easier to read. And if we have a look back at the documentation, the first thing we need to do is we need to pass the user IDs. So once again, you can pass multiple user IDs, but once again, for this simple demonstration, we're only going to be using one. So we're going to say user IDs and then equals, and then all we need to do is pass the username. And uh oh, I've noticed a slight issue here. I don't know if you've seen it either, but as you can see, we have the username here, but not the user ID. Now here's another part where the player service absolutely shines. So if we say local user ID equals, just like this, what we can do is we can use another method provided by the player service, and look at that, the Roblox AI has absolutely helped us out here. Um, we can say players, and then we can use the colon, get user ID from name async, yes it is a bit of a mouthful, and we can pass the username variable. And now this handy method here is going to return the user ID based off the username. And now we can simply pass the user ID inside of this user IDs table and they'll be banned. Now you may be noticing we still have a couple more things we need to pass. So the duration and the display and private reason. So let's get the display reason and private reason out of the way. So we're going to say display reason. Uh, let's just copy it from here. Display reason equals and then we're going to pass reason and then you're going to notice both display reason and private reason are required. So we're going to then pass private reason equals and then it's going to be the exact same reason. Once again, if you were to be implementing this yourself, you'd have a more sophisticated reason system. So you'd have your private reasoning, obviously, and you'd have your display reasons. And of course, you'd make the messages more personal. Um, next, what we're going to do is we're going to finally pass the duration. Remember that the band time or the duration here is actually in seconds and I do like duration a lot more so I'm going to change band time to be duration just like this and then finally we can pass duration equals duration inside of the dictionary and our program should be ready to go so we can remove this multi-line common as it's not too useful for us we can publish and I think we're ready to test so let's hop into studio here and give this a whirl okay and let's try this out. So slash ban, cookie underscore dev x. Then we need our reason, hacking, and I'm gonna say 10 seconds. Bang, here we go. Okay, so as you can see, I've not been banned here, and let's check what the reason for. Ah, okay. So here's a super important thing to remember. 
The Banasync will succeed on a production game servers, meaning it will work in the actual Roblox, but it will not work in the test environment, aka Roblox Studio Playtest. So let's make sure this is fully published and head into the Roblox game to see if it works. Okay, so here I am inside of the testing game, ready to give this a quick whirl, and let's try this out. So slash ban, cookie underscore dev x, reason, hacking, and I don't want to be too long banned from my own game, so I'm going to say 10 seconds. There we go, and that is perfect. So now, ooh, uh, if I can do this on time, if I try to rejoin the game, you're going to see I'm still banned. And then hopefully, if we wait a couple of seconds, I should be unbanned for the game. So thank you for tuning in to another cookie tape video. I hope you enjoyed today's new episode. Sorry, I just had to waste a little time here. Let's see if we can now join. Okay, it's waiting for an available server. Must have been 10 seconds by now. And perfect, we're unbanned from the game. So thank you for tuning in to another video once again. Um, if you have uh, any questions or you want to just talk about Roblox or anything like that, feel free to head to the Cookie Take forums or the Cookie Take Discord. Both share your love. They're linked down below. That's all from me. Once again, thank you for tuning in and bye bye.